grade one listening practice. Today I'm going to be going over part two with you. So here are the directions for part two. In this part, you will hear six passages, A through F. Each passage will be followed by two questions, numbers 13 through number 24. For each question, you will have 10 seconds to choose the best answer and mark your answer on your answer sheet. The passage and the questions will be given only once. Now let's begin. And remember, if you can't understand the question or the passage, because this is not the real test, you can always listen again. All right, All right. passage A, Secretariat. Secretariat has been called the greatest racehorse of all time. He set numerous records, and in 1973, he won the Triple Crown, a prize for horses that come first in three of the most competitive races in the U.S. Surprisingly, however, Secretariat was also famous for often being the slowest when races began. It took him time to build up speed, but by the end of the race, he was nearly always far ahead of the competition. Sadly, Secretariat developed a foot disease, and his owner had to have him put to sleep to end his suffering. After Secretariat's death, doctors examined him and discovered the reason for his amazing speed and stamina. His heart was over twice the size of an ordinary racehorse's. Some of Secretariat's descendants have been successful as well because they share the same genetic characteristic. Question 13. What is one thing that Secretariat was known for? One, he often began his races slowly. Two, he was a difficult horse to control. Three, he usually finished in either first or last place. Four, he was the first Triple Crown winner. Going back to the passage, it says Secretariat was also famous for often being the slowest when races began. So he started very slow, but then built up speed until he was usually very far ahead of the competition. So the answer, the answer is one. He often began his races slowly. Question 14. 14. What was discovered, was discovered after the secretariat died? One, he had been injured in his final race. Two, he had died from a rare heart disease. Three, his death could have been prevented. Four, his heart was much larger than normal. Back to the passage again. His heart was over twice the size of an ordinary racehorse. So his heart was twice as big as a normal racehorse's. This means the answer is four. His heart was much larger than normal. All right, okay with those questions. Moving on, passage B. Henry Rowan's gift. Today, it is not unusual for billionaires to make enormous donations to colleges and universities, especially world-class institutions like Harvard or Yale. The first contribution of over $100 million, however, was made by billionaire engineer Henry Rowan in 1992. It went to Glassboro State College in New Jersey. Rowan's gift was unusual because Glassboro was a small public college whose academic reputation was adequate, but not exceptional. At the time, the college was in serious financial difficulties. Rowan's gift not only saved it, but also allowed it to expand its engineering school. Rowan felt that his money would be best spent improving engineering facilities at a college that had a large number of students from low-income backgrounds, people who otherwise may not have become successful. Many observers agree with Rowan, arguing that donations like his create greater benefits than giving to universities that are already well financed. Question 15. What is one thing we learn about Glassboro State College in 1992? One, it had many, it had many engineering students. Two, it Two. became the largest college in New Jersey. Three, it was struggling financially. Four, it closed down temporarily. Going back, Going back to the passage, 
At the time, the college was in serious financial difficulties. By at the time, it's referring back to 1992 when Henry Rowan donated the money. So before he donated $100 million, the college was struggling financially, meaning that the answer is three. It was struggling financially. Question 16. Why did Henry Rowan donate to Black? One, he thought his money would have more impact there. Two, he studied there before he became rich. Three, he believed Harvard and Yale were overrated. Four, he had been unable to attend college himself. So he so, said Rowan felt that his money would be best spent improving engineering facilities at a college that had a large number of students from low-income background. So he thought that it was better spent at a small university with students from all from many different backgrounds, many of them being low income, than at a very rich, financially stable school. So the answer is number one. He thought his money would have more impact there. Passage C. Animals in the early space program. The first space travelers in the 1950s were animals. Back then, space travel involved a greater likelihood of accidents, such as explosions, so it was considered too risky for humans. Researchers were also interested in studying the effect of long periods of weightlessness on living creatures' internal organs. The animals that returned from successful missions in space were therefore closely examined for ill effects. The U.S. often sent chimpanzees into space. They are biologically similar to humans and could be trained to train a simple in-flight flight act. Russian scientists, however, found apes and monkeys too excitable and unpredictable and sent dogs. Dog. Dogs could dog. be trained to sit quietly for long periods of time, and it was thought this would help them remain calm in flight. The canine astronaut was also female because the scientists thought they had a more mild-mannered nature than male dogs. Dog. Question 17. What did researchers do after the animals returned from space? One, they treated them for injuries. Two, they helped them gain weight. Three, they looked for physical changes. Four, they trained them for future missions. Going back to the passage, the animals that returned from successful missions in space were therefore closely examined for ill effects. The researchers wanted to see how their internal organs were doing, whether they were doing well, whether they were performing poorly, how space affected their organs. So the answer is three. They looked for physical changes. Question 18. Why did Russian scientists choose to send dogs into space? One, their organs could cope well with weightlessness. Two, their behavior was suited to space travel. Three, they could fit easily in a space capsule. Four, they were capable of learning tasks quickly. Back to the passage, dogs could be trained to sit quietly for long periods of time and it was thought this would help them remain calm in flight. So because monkeys were very excited, they would move a lot, they didn't perform as well in space as dogs. Dogs could sit, they were well behaved, they were very calm, especially female dogs. So the answer is two. Their behavior was suited to space travel. Okay, passage D. Selfies. Selfies are pictures taken of oneself, often using a smartphone. The number of people posting them online has risen dramatically. And experts say <laughs> selfies can positively affect people's feelings about their appearance. This is because they allow people to present themselves in a way they are proud of. In the past, most photographs on the internet were of models, actors, or celebrities, but now selfies of ordinary people are more common. Some experts think this has helped change the standards of beauty in popular culture. On the downside, people feel pressure to post selfies that will be popular and widely shared. This can be stressful, especially for teenagers. Also, critics point out that people have had fatal accidents while taking selfies in risky situations, 
such as at the edge of a cliff or too close to wildlife. The desire to take a memorable selfie can lead to a lack of regard for nearby hazards. Question 19. According to the speaker, what is one effect of selfies? One, they are motivating people to stay fit. Two, they have helped young actors gain popularity. Three, they can make people feel better about themselves. Four, they have led to increased sales of smartphones. Going back to the passage, experts say selfies can positively affect people's feelings about their appearances. So this means that people feel good about themselves when they're taking pictures of themselves. It makes them feel good, it makes them feel beautiful, handsome. So the answer is three. They can make people feel better about themselves. Question 20. What is one concern critics have regarding selfies? One, people sometimes put themselves in danger to take selfies. Two, people often harm wild animals while taking selfies. Three, selfies encourage people to spend too much time online. Four, selfies can lead to online bullying. Back to the second or the third paragraph in the passage. People have had fatal accidents while taking selfies in risky situations, such as at the edge of a cliff or too close to wildlife. So people are putting themselves in danger just taking a picture of themselves with the cliff, with the animals. Sometimes people have died because of this. So critics have the concern that people sometimes put themselves in danger to take selfies. Number one. All right. Passage E. Cycling in Copenhagen. In 2016, the number of cyclist commuters in the city center of Copenhagen, Denmark, surpassed the number of cars. Surprisingly, however, a survey revealed that only about 1% of cyclists said protecting the natural environment was their main reason for cycling rather than driving. About 19% said improving their health was their main motivation. The most common reason given was rather unexpected. 54% said cycling was usually the quickest way to get from one place to another. Cyclists in Copenhagen enjoy wide cycle lanes, and the city has designed special systems to speed up their commutes. For example, traffic signals in the city were originally designed with cars in mind, and were timed to reduce the number of stops cars had to make at them. Recently, however, many traffic signals have been reprogrammed to do the same thing for cyclists. Question 20. What was the main reason given by people for cycling to work? One, it is better for the national environment. Two, it is usually faster than driving. Three, they wanted to change to a healthier lifestyle. Four, they received financial support from the city. So going back in the survey, 54% of people, more than half, definitely the majority, said that cycling was usually the quickest way to get from one place to another. It's faster to ride your bicycle, bicycle than it is to drive a car. That's crazy. I don't believe it. So the answer is two. It is usually faster than driving. Whew, that's crazy. All right. And question 22. What is one thing Copenhagen has done to help cyclists? One, it has repaired old cycle lanes. Two, it has created cycle lanes with no traffic signals. Three, it has removed the speed limit for bicycles. Four, it has adjusted the timing of its traffic signals. So going to the last paragraph, for example, traffic signals in the city were originally designed with cars in mind for time to reduce the number of stops cars had to make at them. And then the city did the same thing for bicyclists, for cyclists. So Copenhagen 4, adjust the timing of its traffic signals. All right, passage F, give me a break. Many people believe that the best way to work is to stay focused and keep working on a task until it is done. However, evidence suggests that employees might be more productive if they took frequent breaks. For instance, one social media company created a program that calculates employees' productivity by keeping track of what they do on their computers. The company discovered 
the most productive employees took about 17 minutes of break time for every 52 minutes spent working. Some researchers suggest that, like muscles, the brain gets tired and can benefit from stress. However, However, the break we take might also matter. Recent studies have shown that taking a break to do something unrelated to work can actually make employees feel more tired. However, setting a difficult task aside to do something work-related but easy, such as writing a to-do list, seems to boost productivity. Question 23. What was the computer program designed to do? One, help employees stay awake while working. Two, prevent employees from visiting social media sites. Three, tell employees when to take breaks. Four, track employees' computer activity. Going back to the passage, one social media company created a computer program that calculates employees' productivity by keeping track of what they do on the computers. So the computer program kept track of what the employees were doing, when they were taking a break, when they were working, so it could see how long their breaks were compared with the, the amount of minutes that they spent working. So the answer is four, track employees' computer activity. And question 24, what is one of the recent studies have shown? One, doing easy work during a break can be beneficial. Two, it is good to chat with coworkers during a break. Three, taking breaks too often can make people tired. Four, it is better to finish a difficult task before resting. Back to the passage. So taking a break to do something unrelated makes employees feel more tired, but doing something that is still work-related, but easy or fun, boosts productivity. So it's good to keep your mind on work but do something a little easier or a little more exciting, connected, but not as difficult as the work that you were previously doing. So the answer is one, doing easy work during a break can be beneficial. All right, that's all for listening part two. I'll be back with listening part three. Good luck during your studies and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.